Carcharodontosaurus saharicus is one of the largest known predatory dinosaurs. So Carcharodon is the group that includes the great white shark and megalodon, which if you know about sharks are pretty much the two most fearsome sharks that have ever lived. And the name was chosen because the teeth in the Carcharodontosaurus are similar in some ways to those that you'd see in a great white shark. So they were very sharp and they were serrated, which means that they were good at slicing through flesh of their prey with something like a sharp serrated knife. Last week we discussed another Carcharodontosaur named Gigantosaurus, but Gigantosaurus was around in South America while Carcharodontosaurus was around in Africa. Carcharodontosaurus was originally described as Megalosaurus saharicus because Megalosaurus was the catch-all taxon at the time, and I think we've discussed this with other dinosaurs in the past. So the origin of Carcharodontosaurus is a little bit odd. It appears that it was originally discovered by Ernst Stromer von Rickenbach back in 1914 when he dug up the bones, but the first published article about it was as Megalosaurus saharicus by Charles de Perret and his colleagues when they dug up some teeth in North Africa in 1927. And then Ernst Stromer von Rickenbach renamed the species Carcharodontosaurus saharicus in 1931 when he was reviewing their research as well as publishing information about the own bones that he had dug up several years prior. So unfortunately, all of these bones were destroyed during a bombing raid in World War II, so it's not a very well-known dinosaur. It's very similar to Spinosaurus, which was discovered around the same time, also by Ernst Stromer, and those bones were also destroyed in the same bombing raid back in World War II. Because there was a fair amount of uncertainty, T. rex has been a much more popular dinosaur in modern pop culture. But since the large skull of a Carodontosaur was discovered in 1995, it's rising in popularity again and is being seen all over pop culture. So Carcharodontosaurus is a large theropod dinosaur, and they typically walked on two legs. And in case we haven't mentioned it before, theropoda is Greek for beast feet, and they're characterized by those three-toed feet that I'm sure you've seen on a T-Rex. Like Gigantosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus had eight-inch long serrated teeth, which are terrifying. <laughs> it weighed about 13,000 pounds, and it was about 43 feet long, which was probably slightly larger than a T-Rex, actually, although it's a little bit hard to tell because there's always a level of uncertainty, and we have less specimens of Carcharodontosaurus. Carcharodontosaurus had a massive tail, a very large body, and dense bones. Its arms were also very short, and it had the three-fingered, sharp-clawed hands that are similar to T. rex. However, its closest common lineage to T. rex is that they're both in the Tetanuran clad, which started about 100 million years before Carcharodontosaurus was around. Because of its similar appearance, Carcharodontosaurus is often described as the African T. rex, which has misled a lot of people to think that they're very closely related, but as I mentioned, their closest ancestor is 100 million years older. For a long time, paleontologists thought that Carcharodontosaurus had the longest skull of any theropod dinosaur, but that was based on an incomplete skull that missed a few key bones, and the shape ended up not being what they originally expected. Because of that, the total length of the head is only about 5 foot 4 inches in length, if you think that's not that long. That's actually taller than my co-host Sabrina, <laughs> so she could fit inside the space that just its head took up. It's pretty crazy. Its head was even more massive than T-Rex, but its brain case was less than half the size of T-Rex. That may make you think that that means that it was stupid compared to T-Rex, but a lot of scientists caution that that can be misleading as it may just mean that they had less keen senses instead of reduced reasoning abilities, but other scientists disagree and think it was less intelligent. I'll say more about that later. 
Cogerodontosaurus lived in the late Cretaceous period, about 100 to 93 million years ago, and it lived in what is now modern-day northern Africa. So South America was probably just splitting away from Africa when it started to roam the Earth. So its relatives in South America are very similar in appearance, like Gigantosaurus. Even though it's a complete desert now, at the time, Africa was very warm and humid and it had rivers and lakes all over the place. If you remember our episode about Spinosaurus aegypticus, you know that there were both aquatic and semi-aquatic predators around in that space at that same time. It shared space with Aranosaurus and huge sauropods like Paralititan, and it was likely the top predator in the area, so it probably was very territorial and would have a large space to roam if it's similar to modern top predators. Its huge teeth were probably a big part of its hunting strategy. With their huge serrated teeth, they could easily open a huge wound in an animal, and it might have caused the animal to go into shock, which would make it disoriented, and it would allow Carcharodontosaurus to easily kill it, or maybe it could have just waited for it to bleed to death. It probably came into conflict at least once in a while with the largest carnivorous dinosaur known of all time, Spinosaurus, and that's because they overlapped for about 3 million years in northern Africa based on our current evidence. Some people think that they would have gotten into huge battles, but based on what we talked about in the Spinosaurus episode, since Spinosaurus was so much more into aquatic living, I'm not so sure that they would have fought very often. Even though Carcharodontosaurus had short three-fingered arms similar to T-Rex, they were actually longer than T-Rexes and very strong. They may have used their arms to grab smaller prey, and that actually reminds me of another one of its relatives, Allosaurus. Carcharodontosaurus had long muscular legs, and there were fossilized trackways indicating that it might have run at about 20 miles an hour. But there is a little bit of controversy on whether or not it could have because of its huge body mass. So as we mentioned, Carcharodontosaurus was a distant relative of T. rex, and its brain appears to have evolved from a common ancestor with modern reptiles. It appears that the inner ear anatomy of Carcharodontosaurus saharicus resembled modern crocodiles, and they had a huge portion of their brain dedicated to smelling. Based on the size of the portion of their brain dedicated to smell, it may have been able to smell better than modern dogs, and it would have rivaled T. rex. It probably also had pretty good hearing, which is surprising to me because obviously they don't have ears. I don't know what kind of a structure they had to hear, but that's pretty neat. And their sight was a little bit limited because their eyes were more on the side of their head rather than pointing forward for stereoscopic vision. But they did have large optic nerves, so it's a little bit unclear to me at least whether or not they used their eyes very much for hunting. Even though there are no soft tissues preserved during the fossilization process, there are a lot of clues that we can get by looking at the bones, and there have been a lot of endocasts made of Carcharodontosaurus's skulls, and that's how we've learned all of this about the shape of their brain and which parts of its brain were large relative to other portions. The brain looks pretty similar to modern lizards, turtles, and other reptiles, but not to modern birds. It's also the same structure that we've seen in Allosaurus when it was previously modeled. So the more intelligent Tyrannosaurus rex evolved down a different pathway and appeared to have a better ability to reason, which would have made it a more impressive predator and may have possibly led to how that lineage out performed the Carcharodontosaurus and its relatives. So Carcharodontosaurus is really starting to get popular in modern culture and there are a few places that you can see it. It's featured in Monsters Resurrected and you can also get it in Jurassic Park Builder which is a tablet game. You can see it in the end of series 3 of the show Primeval which according to IMDB is about a team of British people 
tracking down and capturing all sorts of dangerous prehistoric creatures. Sounds like an interesting show. I'm going to have to check it out. It's also in the show Dinosaur Planet, but for some reason they characterize their huge South American predator as Carcharodontosaurus when they really should have called it Giganotosaurus because we all know that they weren't in South America, they were in Africa. And finally, you can see it in Lost World from Planet Dinosaur, where it again fights a Spinosaurus. So Ernst Stromer described Carcharodontosaurus, and his full name is Ernst Freier Stromer von Rickenbach. Freier is a German title similar to Baron. Stromer described a number of dinosaurs from Egypt, and in November of 1910, he met with John Ball, who was the founder of the Desert Survey Department of the Geological Survey of Egypt, and they had published the first topographic map of Egypt and was finishing a geological map to be published in 1911. And these maps were very invaluable to Stromer, and it helped him with his upcoming expedition he had planned. Stromer had first visited Egypt in 1901 and loved the area. So he decided to return to look for some early mammal fossils. However, in the first stage of his expedition, unfortunately, he was just very frustrated and him and his team didn't really find much. But in the second stage of his expedition, he and his team found three different species of carnivorous dinosaurs, which also included Bahariasaurus and Spinosaurus. However, because of World War I, he had to wait for a number of years for the fossils from Egypt to be shipped to him in Germany. He finally got them in 1922, but they had been packed poorly and were damaged pretty badly, so it took him a while to put them all back together. So he didn't publish any formal descriptions of these fossils until the 1930s. A Stromer himself led an interesting and a little bit tragic life. He defied the Nazi party, and he paid for that. He was from an old aristocratic German family, so he was not personally harmed, but all three of his sons were sent to fight in the war. Two died in combat, and one was captured and imprisoned in the Soviet Union for a few years. During World War II, the fossils that Stromer had found in Egypt remained in a Munich museum, despite Stromer requesting to move the fossils to a safer place. There were a lot of curators of fine art and science museums in Germany removing their works and specimens to caves and salt mines to better protect them. But unfortunately, Stromer's fossil discoveries were not a part of that, and in April 1944, a British Royal Air Force bombed the museum and destroyed all of his fossils. His fossils weren't the only ones that were destroyed in the war. Between 1940 and 1944, there were 17 dinosaur fossils, including some type specimens, that were destroyed. However, years later, some of the specimens that Stromer described have been found again. Not the same specimens, but other examples. For example, Spinosaurus, which we talked about in an earlier episode. Scientists described Spinosaurus in more detail in 2014, and we now know, for example, it's a semi-aquatic dinosaur, and it was very large carnivore. And in 1995, Paul Sereno and his team found Carcharodontosaurus again, not far from the Algerian border, they found a skull that matched the description that Stromer had written. So even though some of the fossils were destroyed in World War II, at least scientists found more evidence and have been able to study this dinosaur more thoroughly. 